गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी अवेक गुड सो बिफोर दी स्लाइड्स कम अप जस्ट वुड लाइक टू सी लाइक यू नो वॉट कैंड ऑफ मिक्स वी हैव इन दी ऑडियंस सो हाउ मेनी आर फ्रॉम आई पी पीज ओनर्स इन्वेस्टर्स इन दी ऑडियंस दिस कैंड ऑफ कैटेगरी आई पी पीज ओनर्स इन्वेस्टर्स ओके आई सी वन हैंड देर हाउ मेनी फ्रॉम ई पी सी okay few and how many from uh, finance unfortunately none because uh, i believe uh, finance is probably the one take the, takes the largest risk in a in a project about 70 to 80% if we go by the typical uh, uh, debt uh, scenarios the finance uh, companies give you funding for 70 to 80% of the capex so okay interesting okay so i'm going to talk about uh, quality now that was one of the uh, key topics that you know was discussed in the last session as well and i was really happy to hear the panelist uh, talk about quality uh, of the uh, systems and projects um, what we've been doing is uh, for the past uh, few years you know uh, testing a lot of modules we have our own labs in us and uh, we've designed our own test uh, program uh, to uh, you know find out the reliability and the performance of modules Uh, which is a combination of certain ic uh, standards as well as certain other standards which go beyond ic requirements as well we come up with what we call as a scorecard report i am not sure how many of you all have seen this this is a freely available uh, report and we attempt to update this report every one or two years uh, and this is the third uh, edition that we've come up uh, so far in 2017 and uh, uh you know but i i encourage and welcome everybody to kind of download this report uh, you no know, from our website it is uh, freely available this is a kind of a test protocol just to give you a fair you know uh, idea of you know what what we do in this uh, testing before we get into the results so what we do is basically test the modules for uh, conditions which are beyond ic requirement so we go uh, two or three times you know uh, induce that much stress into the module when we actually test so the protocols probably would remain the same for example when it comes to tests like thermal cycling damp heat humidity freeze but we will do uh, also do some extra tests like you know dynamic mechanical loading which is not part of the uh, ic uh, standard 61215 for example and we would also do certain extra tests of pid and we can also uh, you know uh, create pan files based on measurement data uh, you know uh, to give you an independence when you actually doing your uh, simulation so that you are very close to realistic estimates when you do your estimations for uh, project and i'll directly jump into some of the findings that we have from the testing that we've been doing for the past 6 uh, to 7 years uh, okay before that i'll i'll uh, let you know that you know in this uh, 2017 report these were some of the module manufacturers which performed uh, at a significantly better or a higher level in 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 the test that we've performed and you see a lot of names uh, in in the uh, report uh, which is basically global suppliers uh, supplying to india as well as to you know markets outside of india as well <coughs> this is first finding uh, you know of our test this is basically result of thermal cycling uh, of uh, 600 or 800 cycles i'm not uh, able to see from here but it is basically at least three or four times ic requirement and the modules that we test is all ic certified modules so like you know we we select modules from the manufacturer commercial lines they are not prototypes they are they are actual modules which are manufactured for sale not pro prototypes which are meant for certification requirements so in that what we see is even though the modules are certified there are about 5 to 6% of the modules which would not meet the ic requirement if we were to test them again you know picking up from the commercial production or from from the the warehouse and test them for the the same ic test for which they were tested we would find that at least 5 to 6% do not meet the ic requirement this is one very important finding from our test report because in the market if you were to compare all the modules you know every module is ic certified i mean if it is not ic certified that module would not be actually you know be available in the market for for sale that's that's a minimum requirement but we see that minimum requirement is sometimes kind of you know not met when you actually do an independent testing this is another important finding uh, we we heard the uh, earlier panelists uh, talk about bill of materials now we know that for every module every series or the same data sheet of the module that you have there could be multiple bill of material combinations and for obvious reasons of you know maybe say supply chain or any other you know uh, reasons the manufacturers can have different bomb combinations now 
in our experience, we've seen that, you know, different bombs can perform differently. So the data sheet is the same. Like, you know, if, if it's say, for example, a 300 watt module and all the parameters which are listed in a data sheet, they would be exactly the same. But when you see, when you test different bombs, you find different results. In this case, you see, you know, there's a significant difference in the bomb. And when you actually induce more and more stress into the module, when you go 400, 600, 800 cycles, the gap in the performance is increasing. It, it gives an indication that into the lifetime of the plant, when, when it will reach the, towards the end of the plant, the degradation is likely to increase significantly for one bomb versus the other bomb. That's, that's an important consideration that you need to have when you're actually finalizing or procuring modules for your projects. The other thing is the location. Now, as of now, you know, we have maximum modules coming from China. Like, you know, most of the uh, global suppliers are Chinese and most of the uh, factories are in China. But at the same time, there are some factories that are outside of China, maybe in Taiwan, Malaysia, some in Europe, some in US. What we've seen is there is no correlation of the location of the factory or where the modules are manufactured versus the performance. So we've seen you could have good and bad performing modules from all the regions. So it's not like, you know, if, if the models come from Europe or US, they are very good or you know, the models come from China, they are bad. Like it, it's not that, there, there's a very good mix and there's, there's no correlation. So you, you could not make a decision based on the location of the factory from where the model is being supplied to. The other finding is the volume. Now, very often we, we tend to rely on modules which are so-called tier one uh, manufacturers. Now this tier one classification is basically based on a lot of parameters which are all non-technical and which do not have anything to do with the performance or the reliability of the modules. They are probably the, the, the capacity of the manufacturer in terms of number of factories, the uh, number of mega, megawatt or gigawatts that they can produce in a year, uh, you know, uh, number of lines that they have, what is the strength of the financial uh, ba balance sheet, etc. These are all the parameters which go into classifying as tier one modules. But in our experience, again, you have a very good mix of, you know, even probably smaller players, uh, you know, producing good modules and larger players pro producing not so good modules as well. So again, your tier one classification or the size of the manufacturer is not a, a good proxy for making purchase decisions. That there's, there's no correlation in the performance of the module versus the size. And the last is again, you know, uh, the attention to quality. Now, what we mean by is, uh, in our program, we've seen a lot of manufacturers participate once and at the same time, there are many manufacturers who are participating time and again, which means every time, whenever they're coming up with a newer and newer module, some tweaks that they do in that technology, in the process that they manufacture, they want to test it for the performance and reliability. So the, the manufacturers who are kind of, you know, coming back to us and testing with us again and again, we see very good performance in, in, in their modules rather than, you know, some one-off model manufacturers who come to us for, you know, one-time testing, uh, uh, things like that. So it's, it's a very clear indication that, you know, manufacturers who are very quality conscious would come to these kind of voluntary programs for testing and then demonstrate the quality of their modules by these independent testing. So in, in short, this is basically a kind of a recommended practice, if you will, that you know what, what process you could follow for procurement uh, decisions. So one is you could request the manufacturers to produce the testing results of the modules of the bill of materials that they, uh, they would want to uh, supply to your projects. You review those test results and then make a decision, purchase decision. Once the purchase decision is made, what you could also do is, you know, take some sample modules from the manufactured batch and then test it independently for some serial defects or thing like that. By this, you are reasonably sure of you what you've got for what you've paid for actually. So these are some of the recommendations that, you know, we have from an independent test laboratory perspective for your professors. So if there are four or five vendors that a specific investor is actually looking at, he has reviewed their test reports, which means the module manufacturers have uh, perform these tests uh, through an independent uh, test uh, laboratory like us and only then a bank or a APC developer is going to procure modules from that supplier. So in conclusion, you know, the good news is that a lot of module manufacturers that we've tested with perform very well, but the tier one status, all these things are not a good proxy. And as I said, the bad news is like, you know, you, you can't pick good performing modules just based on the tier one classification or the size of their uh, manufacturing or, or the strength of the balance, financial balance sheet of the manufacturer. 
The other thing is, you know, uh, you uh, insist on third-party accelerated testing reports because they are a very good indicator of the quality and the performance of the module. Um, ensure that whatever bomb has been tested, whatever test reports that you have reviewed, you are buying the same bill of material combinations. Because if the test is uh, done on uh, some other bill of material and what you've been supplied is something different, then again, there's no correlation for the performance of the module. So you should you should ensure that you know you you buy the same bomb of of the report which you have actually reviewed and approved. And even when you do all these rigorous uh, procedures before making a purchase decision, and as I said, what you could do is still you know uh, pick few samples from the module from the manufactured batch and then independently test for any kind of defects or you know uh, quality issues that you may find. And there there is a uh, five to six percent that uh, we have found that the modules probably will not. Uh, meet the IEC requirements. So with that, uh, no, that's uh, no. I end my presentation. I'll be available to take questions after that. Um.